Hey guys, today we are going to try if we can make a homemade belt as well. If you guys want to know how a belter model works, go check Steve model. He has a wonderful video about Seabuck and belter efforts. But anyway, here's a brief note about how it works. Think, a, think of a light traveling through different medium as the current. When the light reaches a different medium, its path will deviate. In this case, uh, instead of deviation, it creates a temperature difference. This temperature could go high and low. To create a Peltair cell, you need to stack a lot of this medium junction in a particular way. The particular way means when you pass current through it, the junction from the first medium to the second medium should always be in one side and the other junction on the other side. When I first heard of this process, just like you guys, I searched at the YouTube and only one guy made a Peltair cell. So, I watched his video and take his model as a preference. But instead of using iron and copper, I use graphite and aluminum. I got this idea from an another YouTube called Mr. Teslonian. He had a lot of video about building a belt cell. Go check his channel. So let's start building. I took a hardboard as a plane to place the cell. We have to poke holes for both graphite and aluminum. You can poke as many holes you want, it's your choice. But for our cell, I decided to poke 190 hole after some calculation. Putting holes is a real fluctuating part on this project, but there's no other way. The next part of the cell is graphite and aluminum. Let's start with the graphite. I brought pencil lead separately so I don't have to get rid of the wood coating and it's the best way to save money in this part. I cut the lead into 1 cm long section and insert into the hole by leaving a hole after every one lead piece for the aluminum. For aluminum, I couldn't find any wires or string, so I cut thin stripes from an aluminum sheet and cut it into 4 cm long section. The connecting way was simple. We insert the aluminum strip into the hole which we leave between two graphite and connect the upper end of the aluminum to the upper part of the left graphite and lower end to the lower right end of the right graphite and so on. This is kind of the most frustrating part of this entire project.
checking all junctions and connecting with an extended wire i tested it with a voltage selectable adapter and i also connected a led in series to see if it work and this is the result The result was really disappointing. In the beginning, I thought it might be any connection issue. But later, I realized that graphite has a property to reduce voltage. This is why they use graphite in potentiometer. But in our case, it's a big disappointment. To overcome this property, we have to supply high volt. For the high volt, I am using a circuit from a buck zapper and my adapter as a power source. Later, I decided to run suicide test. Uh, I plug in the high volt and going to touch the circuit to see if there is any temperature difference. The danger of this part in, of this test is if in case the co any connection problem occurs the current will flow through me. So I run the test and the result was still disappointing. There was no temperature difference but it definitely hits my body by giving a decent amount of shock. I couldn't record every spark due to the frame rate issue. So, um, yes. It is cold. So I decided to make the exact module he made with the iron and copper but he has 30 holes in his cell I am going to go with 36. This time we are dealing with two metals so we can solder them to get more connectivity and after some continuity test our Peltier cell mark 2 is ready to test. Yes the result was still a little disappointing but if you ask me uh, does it work honestly it really does because one side of the panel become really hot but the other side just remain the same temperature. This means Peltier effect is working a tiny bit but I couldn't understand how he get. Yes, it is cold. In his videos comment box I saw a guy saying that he's going to use this in his mobile as cooler. Guys, if you use this 
itself for more than 10 seconds the heat from the other side will reach the normal temperature side because metal is thermal conductive so if he is still going to use this in his mobile i got only one advice you better watch your ass son hope you all liked the video if you did don't forget to subscribe bye